according to Mark. Let's go to Mark's resurrection story. In Mark chapter 16, very early in the morning, first day of week. Okay, right here, starting Mark 16, verse 1. This one's awesome. This one, at first, you're just like, oh, yeah, why would they use her name? What's the purpose of her name? Why didn't they just use Mary again? Right? You see, they got Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Salome is only used twice in Scripture. At the end of verse 15 of, uh, of chapter 15 of, of Mark, and then again in verse 1 of Mark 16, 1. Why? You see? It, it, there's a reason. Every single thing in Scripture has a reason. We don't know what all of those reasons are, not even close. But in this revelation of the end, we have so many little clips and parts and pieces that are just phenomenal. They blow our minds. Listen to this. And it's not just about saying, say, here it is. I'm going to show you the revelation of it. So there was no Salome in, in Luke. But in Luke, the body of the Lord Jesus was gone. Do you see that in Mark? Nope. No body was gone. <clears throat> what happens if we go to Matthew? The end of the Sabbath day began to begin. And came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And the, there was a great earthquake. See? There's that great earthquake. Where was the other great earthquake? You also see it in uh, in uh, 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 the discourse. Angel of the Lord rolled back, countenance like lightning. No, no body. No body. Interesting, right? So only Luke's has the body that was gone. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ was gone. That's because in the synoptic gospel revelation, that is the bride of Christ gone and them being perplexed, them being in bewilderment. In fact, we can prove that out <clears throat> directly in Luke's discourse so that you can know it's related to the end of days. Watch this. Luke 21, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares, verse 35, for as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. You see? It's going to be a snare. What does that mean? It, it, does somebody who step into a snare, are they aware that it was there? No. They are caught unawares. They are caught off guard. They got caught in the snare, not aware. They were what? Perplexed. They're bewildered. Oh, what on earth? <clears throat> I was just having dinner in front of my family and they, they vanished. Am I in a dream? Is this reality? What happened? This is exactly what that's saying. <clears throat> it's exactly what this is saying. So what do you think I'm going to be able to find when we go to Mark and we get this strange little occurrence with this woman named Salome. <clears throat> Remember, it's types and shadows, and everything in Scripture has its purpose. Well, Salome, this Salome was a good woman. She was a Christian, God-fearing, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. She was Christian. She was God-fearing, right? Loved the Lord. She wasn't a bad Salome, but her reference of her name and the typology is directly connected to the bad Salome. You say, bad Salome, what on earth are you talking about? <clears throat> the bad Salome is this one right here. Remember that? Salome who requested the head of John the Baptist through her mother, right? And it was for Herod, remember? Herod said, oh yes, what would you like, Salome? What would you like for your birthday? And she talks to her mother, hey, what should I get, what should I get? And the mother, of course, hated John the Baptist, who was in prison, and she requested her head, or John's head, right? And, of course, her name was Salome. Salome was responsible for what? Beheading. Huh. When do the beheadings take place during tribulation? They take place during seals. 
And the connection is in relation to John the Baptist. <clears throat> so, what does the end of Mark's gospel represent? What did I say and what I've been saying throughout the typology of the resurrection story of Mark represent the end of the six years of seals, the Lord coming at the time of the that rapture time frame. When what? The name representing beheadings is there. Why do you think it is? Her relation is to the beheading of John the Baptist. Check this out. If we go, I told you we were going to come back here again. If we go to the other story, which is the transfiguration, for which is also another typology in Luke, Mark, and Matthew of the 40 days, right? Son of man coming, the end of seals, right? The sixth year of seals, the seventh, seventh year, sorry, the seventh year of seals and the seventh year of trumpets. Well, then we know Luke's was the beginning of the 40 days, right? <clears throat> Check this out. Let's read a little further down. Uh, Luke 9, 34. It says, While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. This is pretty awesome, actually. I'm just getting a little, a little nudge as I'm reading it. I'll, I'll, I'll look into it more and save it for something else. But it, remember, this is directly related to the time frame of the start of the 40 days and who goes up into the cloud uh, at the end of seven days and goes in for 40 days, but Moses, right? And we also know the typology of Moses is the relation to seals. Anyways, that's a side note. So um, go into a cloud, verse 35. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone and they were kept and they kept it close and told no man in those days of any of those things which they had seen. Okay? Now you're saying, uh, okay, what does this have to do with John? What does this have to do with Salome? Right? Where's where's the John typology? There is none. <laughs> there is none. Because in Luke's, there shouldn't be. Do you know why there shouldn't be? Let me prove it out to you. Uh, brrr, where am I going? Da, 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 Luke 12. Listen to Luke 12. In Luke 12, we come to this part. I mean, we've talked about it so many times as well. Starting in Luke 12, verse 35, you know, be girded about. So the Lord is pre-telling. I absolutely believe in my heart and in my understanding that this first watch group is the Lord here pre-telling them right before the body of the Lord being taken, right before the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. Remember, the workers, they are expecting, they're hopeful, they're, they're watching and praying always to be accounted worthy. Not everybody knows if they're workers or not. Not everybody knows if they're going to serve the Lord during seals and be with them for 40 days or not. So what is he going to do? He's going to let them know Right before, a short period of time, I don't know how long before, but shortly before the escape of the pre-trib bride of Christ happens, he is going to inform whoever those people are to be girded about, to let them be prepared, so that when he returns from the wedding and knocks, they may open unto him immediately. This is that group he's going to serve and sit down and eat with, and he only does that in Luke's, with, uh, <coughs> with Luke's resurrection story. All right. It's only the disciples that he did that with. 